Hello drummers and other creatures. This is a follow-up video to a previous one I made about how we play a paradiddle as a groove. Uh, in this case, we're going to look at how we translate paradiddles between the bass drum and the snare. And in my previous video, I explained exactly how to do this just using the good old single paradiddle, which is right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. And in this video, we're going to show, as I, as I promised before, it's kind of a, I, I owe this, this is a debt paying video to the people who are interested. I'm going to look at the, the permutations of the single paradiddle. So assuming we're starting with the right hand, single paradiddle, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, and we have three permutations. That's three different ways we can play the exact same pattern starting in a different spot. The first permutation I know as the inverted paradiddle, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. The next one is diddles at the start, which is right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, and then overlapping diddles, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right. I should know that by now. Right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right. Make yourself familiar with those patterns. I've got some other videos where I go through those, so I'm not going to have demonstrate them with the hands and so on. We're going to focus on substituting the right hand for the bass drum. No, are we substituting the left? The, well, I don't know what are we substituting. No, we're substituting the bass drum for the right hand. Okay, I don't know which way around to say that. I'm going to play my bass drum instead of the right hand. And then I'm going to accentuate the snare on the two and four of each of those patterns to produce my groove. So I'm going to be playing 16th notes as my paradiddle. I'm going to keep eighth notes going on the hi-hat to give us a nice funky groove. And uh, this is something worth working on. It's a really um, the super way to develop your ghost note playing because there's uh, different interactions between the quieter and louder notes, the accented and non-accented notes, or the accented notes and the ghost notes, or the backbeat and the ghost notes, whatever you want to call it. And we've also got um, just a sort of uh, introductory vocabulary for sort of busy funky playing, if you like. So it's worth learning this stuff. You don't have to make it very fast. No rush. Let me just, just give you a recap on the single paradiddle so we can orient ourselves to where we are with that. It's right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. So again, if I just play the bass and my left hand, we get this. to be demonstrative my right hand you don't necessarily need such a large movement and then when we put the hi-hat in on eighth notes does that make sense so let's look at the first permutation and um, I'm gonna look at how first of all we kind of construct one of these patterns because if you're not used to doing it it can be a little bit tricky so we want to be able to chunk it we want to be able to break it down into little bits and so if we're thinking about uh, some 16th notes then each of the paradiddle patterns each permutation uh, is uh, I don't know what do you call it it'd be two beats worth of 16th uh, or altogether eight 16th notes so we're going to be counting one e and a uh, two e and a uh, that covers the whole pattern. So with the first one, we're going to be going uh, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. That's the inverted paradiddle. So that would be uh, one E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh. Okay, I don't know how I can get away with playing and talking so much, so I'll try and avoid that. But that's the count that we're going to do. One E and a, uh, two E and a. Uh. And then we're going to accentuate the snare uh, on the two. That gives us our, our nice backbeat sound. And uh, oh, I must keep my eyes this way when I'm talking, because otherwise you're, you're not going to hear. I'm pointing away from the microphone. OK, so the first pattern, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. The left of the left, right, right, left is going to be our accented snare drum note, but the other notes are going to be softer. So if I just take it with the, the bass and the snare without the hi-hat first, we're going to have... OK, oh, I had a brain fart there. Okay. It's funny, when I've got my head turning this way, my brain stops working. I don't know if that's a condition or just a natural thing that happens, but I'm not used to this angle. I don't know if you like 
Is that good? I, I don't know. I think it gets an interesting view of the drums. So I'm going to try a few videos like this and see how we go. Anyway, back, back to the topic at hand. I'm rambling as usual. So we've got right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. Now, when we put the eighth notes in, that's where it gets a bit tricky. So that's where I'm going to apply this chunking idea. And we're going to think of sort of each group of quarter notes on their own and just focus on that. So if I've got right, left, left, right, I'm going to be playing the hi-hat simultaneous with the first right and then with the second left of the snare there. So we've got... Does that make sense? One, E, and R. And of course, both of those snare drum notes are going to be ghosted, so play those as softly as you can. Okay, and then the second half of that is left, right, right, left. This time I'm going to be lamping the snare, giving it a good, nice, loud smack, accenting the snare drum note. And uh, the hi-hat is going to coincide with that first snare drum note and then with the second of the double bass drums, the two bass drums, okay? So it's right, left, left, like that. That was a bit heavy. So we go back to the first thing that we had, right, left, left, right. Then we have right, left, left, right. No, left, right, right, left, sorry. The brain fart again. And you can work on each one of those in isolation uh, until they feel really comfortable and then you try and stick them together. And if the first time you try it doesn't work, just go back to working on each one of those individually again. Let's see if I can do it. Notice I'm taking a little pause at the end of each little group. The next thing I'm going to do is just see if I can keep it going continuously. Ooh, lovely. After you've done that a few million times, once you get that sort of feeling in your body that, that it's, it, feels, it starts to accept the coordination of all those elements, you can then start paying a bit more attention to the fine detail of what you're doing. You can, you can listen to the groove as a whole rather than focusing on just uh, getting the coordination right and making your hands and feet do what you want them to do and really try and then fine tune what kind of sound you're making uh, on the snare are your ghost notes ghosty enough is your accent nice and snappy is the backbeat feeling good are you playing a nice even bass drum stroke and you can even have a listen to the hi-hat i mean with these sort of grooves in particular i usually play them with the tip of the stick on top of the cymbal so I'm just getting a nice, uh, clean and consistent hi-hat sound. But you want to get the hang of being able to accent um, if you're playing a little bit more rocky or you just want to get into maybe accenting quarters or accenting the other way, accenting the ands. Both of those options have a really good effect and you can kind of go in, go in more depth from there if you like, but okay. So let's see if we can play that a little bit faster. And there you go, permutation number one. The next permutation is right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. Diddles at the start. And we're going to um, think about how we can learn how to control two notes in a row where the first one is accented and the second one is a ghost. So when we've got the, um, the first half of the paradiddle, right, right, left, right, the, sna uh, the snare is going to be playing a ghost note, 
but in the second half of it, we're going to play left loud and then left soft because you've got that, that's the two yama. Like that. So you can see that we've got this, uh, what's known as a controlled stroke in some quarters anyway, uh, where we're going to hit the snare quite firmly, get, get a nice backbeat, and then immediately after that, a soft ghost note. And this, this is one of those things that this particular exercise is very good at helping us to, to fine tune and uh, get good at. It can be a little bit tricky to control. We want to throw the stick down and then let the ghost note sort of occur in a relaxed way. If we let the stick bounce too far back, we're going to get a ghost note that's too loud. Yeah, so we, we want to control the rebound of the stick. And the faster you play it, the, the less work you have to do in a way. So if we go with the whole chunking thing again, the first half of it is right, right, left, right, and the hi-hat is going to coincide with the first of the rights and then um, the left stroke on the snare. Like that. And then the left, left, right, left. Hi-hat coincides with the accented snare and then with the bass drum in the middle of the thing there. Once you've got the hang of each little chunk of four sixteenths or, or one quarter note, however you want to look at it, um, you can try and play the whole pattern and then take a little pause at the end. And then finally, of course, once that feels relaxed in the body, loop it. Now, once you're feeling comfortable with any of these patterns, uh, quite a good idea is to then sort of combine it with a, a bar of any old groove you like. I don't know how often you play these paradiddles continuously as a homogenous groove, but they work really, really well once you've, you've enjoyed practicing them to sort of develop your ghost note playing and so on. Uh, when you start learning how to improvise with them, that's where I think they get interesting and, and very practical and useful. And you sort of use them uh, as, as ways of either combining different paradiddle patterns to make grooves rather than just playing the one uh, permutation of the paradiddle, or you might use it, and this is what I'm going to demonstrate now, as a way of creating uh, just a little bit of interest in, in, in a normal groove that you're playing. So I'm going to play one bar of, say, a boogaloo type thing and then do the, uh, whatever it is, diddles at the start permutation uh, in conjunction with that. So one bar of a, a straightforward groove and then the parallel. The final pattern is the overlapping diddles, which is right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right. The challenge with this pattern is playing a pullout, which means that we, we end up having the accented snare as part of the second half of a diddle. In other words, we're going to be playing a ghost note followed by an accent immediately. And this is a tricky thing to play, and it's a really uh, worthwhile uh, little move to practice doing. Uh, it opens up the options of what you can play on the snare. Now, I find it a little bit challenging to do, and I'm, I don't know how brave I am to do it at faster tempos, but um, you need to be able to do it. And so this is an exercise, you can spend as much time as you like developing uh, that sort of uh, move, right? So we're gonna have ghost note followed by accent. Now I'm gonna pull the stick up like so, and then whack it down. So. If my stick starts with the tip very close to the snare drum, it should just give me um, a light stroke. 
automatically. To chunk that one, we've got right, left, right, left, um, and it's all ghost notes on the snare. The, the, um, the hi-hat's gonna come inside with the two bass drum notes there. And I'm, I'm lifting my hand there in anticipation. And then after that, we're gonna chunk the second half and the, the, the meaning, meaningfulness of the, the move I was explaining between the, um, the soft and the, the louder snare only happens once you join these two things together. But now we've got the hi-hat coinciding with the two snare drum notes. The first one is an accent, the second one is a ghost note. Oh, it could be a nightmare trying to break down these things sometimes. So let's put this together and then we'll see the proper pull out stroke happening. And then you've got the whole set. Um, when you've got comfortable with that, you can play one bar of groove and then one bar of your paradiddle groove. So one bar of groove meaning anything you like. Um, an alternative to that would be also playing three bars and doing the paradiddle pad. Something like this. and so on and so on. Keep working on it until you feel free enough to be able to mix and match the paradiddle patterns and then even improvise on them. And I'll, I'll do a future video uh, explaining there are a few different ways we can approach mixing these things up. So there we go. I guess that about wraps it up. Thank you very much for watching this. Uh, hopefully some more videos will be following this soon on this topic and others. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought. Um, and, you know, is this, is this angle thing any good? Is this a good idea? I don't know. I'll have to see it to make my own mind up. But there we go. Time for you to go off and practice.